Hello everybody, welcome to City Skylines, to a tutorial video about the Move It mod. First of all, sorry about no Aurelia episode this weekend. I have been a bit too busy to make one this week, but don't worry, next weekend is business as usual. So what would I like to do in this video? I want to create an up-to-date tutorial on how to use the Move It mod together with some slightly advanced stuff you can do with it that I recently discovered. And I also want to show you the very new addition to Move It, which is a separate mod that works with uh, Move It and it's called the Align Rotation for Move It. There's going to be some timestamps in the video description if you don't want to be bothered with the basics of Move It. Also, I have many different mods installed right now, so there are buttons on the screen that you might not be familiar with, but don't worry about it, it's not important for what we are doing here. Let's start. So, what is Move It? It's a very simple yet enormously powerful tool that lets you change object's position, vertical and horizontal, even after you already place them down. It's absolutely essential for building infrastructure, highway interchanges, but also moving some buildings around and totally irreplaceable for any kind of detailing. Move It button is right here in the lower right corner, right next to the bulldozer, but you can also call it up by pressing M. Then there are a few other options I can switch. First of all, I can choose how I want to select stuff. I can go for a single selection, which means I will select only one object with each click, or I can go for the marquee selector, which is going to select everything in a set area. I almost always use the marquee tool because it also brings up a list of object types you want to pick up which is a massive help for situations where you have a lot of stuff overlapping and single selection is just not precise enough. In this list, you can choose which object types are going to be selectable. If you want to, for example, have only nodes selectable, you just double click nodes. Or if you want only buildings, you double click buildings or select multiple object types you want. Object types that are not selected here are basically locked for any changes. Also, if I want to select multiple objects into one selection, I need to press shift while selecting those other objects. And if I make a mistake, I need to shift click the already selected object to remove it from the selection that I'm creating. And if you, for whatever reason, want to move networks that are part of a building, you need to hold alt while selecting them. Like for example, networks part of a train station. Now that I have the things selected, I can drag them around holding the primary mouse button or rotate them or rotate the entire selection by holding the secondary mouse button. Selection is then cleared by the secondary mouse button click. If I want to make things go up and down, I need to use the page up or page down keys on the keyboard. If I want finer movements, I need to also hold alt while using the page up and down. For horizontal movements, I can also use the keyboard, the arrow keys, and again, holding alt for finer movement and holding control for rotation. I rarely use the keyboard for horizontal changes though. Then we have these two buttons. The first one is on by default and it's called follow terrain. When it's on, whatever object you move is going to always stay on the terrain, however complicated or rough it may be. If you have it off, it locks the object's vertical position. Both settings here have their uses, although I mostly have it off. Then there is this button, the Align Height, which allows you to match heights of two or more objects. I first need to select an object or multiple objects I want to align. Then click the Align Height button and then click on the object I want to align to. It's important to note that it matches position of the base of the object, but some objects, some, some models, might have the base somewhat differently positioned than you could expect. For example, this retaining wall, if I match heights for it and this road, we can clearly see that the base for the wall is somewhere inside it, not on the top, not on the bottom. Also, most roads have the base on the sidewalk, whilst the asphalt itself is sunken, which becomes important to you when doing some precise detailing, for example. And just like with the selection, if you want to align to a network that is part of a building, you need to hold Alt while selecting it. Then we have the copy button, which is an incredibly important part of this mod. You can either click the button to copy your selection or simply press Ctrl C. As you can see, now you have that selection right under your mouse cursor to paste it wherever you want. You can of course rotate it just like before. What's important here is that at this point, you can click the secondary mouse button once to rotate the selection by 45 degrees which is an incredibly helpful tool for all kinds of situations. I actually use the copy feature of Move It to move or rotate buildings. I rarely click and drag buildings the usual way to rotate them or move them somewhere else. 
only for some smaller adjustments. One reason for this is that moving or rotating a larger structure or in a large city, it's very slow. It's much faster to just copy stuff and rotate or move them while you have them in the paste selection and then obviously just plop them down. Bulldoze button in here is also incredibly useful. It simply deletes any selection of objects you picked. I use this much more than the vanilla bulldozer because it's much more precise. You can select the stuff you want gone, then you can review that selection if you maybe selected something you didn't want and then delete it. And the absolute best part here is that you can undo this by simply pressing Ctrl Z. And there is also a redo shortcut Ctrl Y. I'll return to this feature a bit later because it's kind of interesting. Next up we have these two buttons here. Slightly newer addition to the mod. First is toggle grid which just makes the zonable grid that appears around roads invisible which is a nice little tool to have a bit clearer view sometimes. Second one is just a switch for an underground view to work on tunnels, pipes and so on since you can't select those from the surface. But you can select tunnels in the underground view then select back to the top and add some surface objects to that selection to move them all together. Or I can for example align some surface object height to the height of an underground stuff and so on. These two little buttons here are for saving whatever you selected to use it later. If I for example want to use all of this I have here in some later time, I just select it, click export, name my selection and save it. Now I actually made a physical file in the games directory where this selection is stored so I can call it up whenever I want even on a different map, different save or even I can send it to my friends so they can paste the selection into their saves. All I need to do then is to click import, import again and I'm back with that paste selection just like before. Okay so that was the basic introduction. It will probably end up being a bit longer than I thought but now for some things I originally wanted to make this video about. I already mentioned some tips that I use for example the usage of the copy feature but we still haven't talked about this very important button right here which is the toggle snapping. At first I wasn't paying much attention to it. Sometimes it's a bit annoying to have it on but lately I was really amazed how clever this function is. So let's see what it does. When it comes to buildings, props, decals and trees, the snapping is done to the grid of a zonable road as we can see here. This might be particularly useful for making some uniform tree alleys, park decoration and so on and buildings obviously for nice even alignment to a zonable road. What's interesting here is that the mod extrapolates the position of the grid even if there is no road anymore like we can see here. This also works for nodes which might be nice for some even road layout, although the vanilla road guidelines are probably better for that purpose. Infinitely more useful in my opinion is the snapping for networks, nodes and segments. For straight networks, roads, it allows snapping either 180 or 90 degrees to an axis of a neighboring segment. This means I can simply prolong an existing road like this or create a perfect 90 degree corner. To do this I obviously need to have at least two connected segments so the snapping knows where to snap of course. For curved networks snapping is done to the tangent lines of the segments. I can either drag and snap the segments themselves or a node between two segments which will then both snap to their neighbors. This curve snapping is something you really want to be doing all the time because if the tangent lines for the two neighboring segments don't connect straight or very closely straight, it creates flat nodes which look really bad, especially for some highway loops or something. The snapping can also be used to create a completely straight two segments by just moving the nodes between them. Nodes themselves can also be snapped too. I can for example take this road and snap it here, which obviously won't connect it, but it might for example allow me to raise one of the roads, change it to a bridge with a different mod or just do other stuff with it. This type of snapping is much more useful when trying to move multiple nodes. Let's say I have, for example, this curve here. Maybe I spend a long time creating it and I want to have some very specific shape for it that I want to have in different locations as well. How to make it fit? I select all the nodes on it and drag the node on the side, snap it here, for example. And now, watch this. If I drag it from that node, it becomes the center of rotation for the entire selection. Now I can make the curve rotate precisely to how I need it to and then reconnect it like this for example. I can use the same approach to maybe connect two circles together or a circle so it touches a straight road. And again maybe make one road elevated with different mods to make some interchange design and so on. Another thing I want to mention is the use of the undo feature because it could be used for some slightly unconventional things. Before I go there though, 
one very important thing to remember here. Let's use this example. I have a road consisting of two segments and three nodes, obviously. I want to bulldoze it with the move it feature. So I select just the middle node and delete it. It's obviously completely gone because I deleted a node which was a defining point for both of those segments. So they got deleted as well. And the side nodes got deleted too since they can't exist without a segment. But, oh no, I made a mistake. So I want to undo it. So I press Ctrl Z and nothing happened. Why? Well, because I only made the center node go back, but the rest of the nodes and segments were not part of the original delete command. Therefore, they were not part of the undo command either. This is something you need to keep in mind. Now I'm going to use a few examples I encountered lately. Let's say I need to build something that I can't see. Maybe a road underneath a huge mess of some interchange ramps. So I simply select them, delete them with move it, do whatever I want to do down there and hit Ctrl Z again. Gotta remember to not use move it after the deletion. Otherwise Ctrl Z won't undo the deletion, but whatever you did afterwards. Of course, use at your own risk. Deleting some carefully built interchange to then rely on the undo button is quite brave, to say the least. I used it a few times before, worked fine. Uh, definitely do a save before this change. Another example is something you could have seen in my Aurelia series last time. When I needed to use precision engineering, specifically the protractor tool to create a perfect fit for an asymmetrical curved road, but there was a canal in the way, so I deleted it did my thing and put it back. Simple. Another thing is something not super useful every day, but sometimes you might need it. Let's say I have these two roads and for whatever reason, I need to connect these using just a single long segment, a lot longer than the game would otherwise create if I build it normally. So I'm just going to stretch one segment by dragging this node, connect it and then hit control Z. Sometimes it will leave the new road seriously distorted, but I can easily repair that by moving the segment, tangent lines, maybe even use the snapping again, easy. And finally, let's take a look at the brand new Align Rotation for Move It mod. A simple addition to the original Move It, although incredibly useful. It only works for buildings, props and decals. Won't do anything to trees, nodes, segments, or even larger selection of those, or to selection containing these object types. It comes with three main commands. Let's say I have this building and I want it neatly oriented towards that road. So I just select it, hit Alt A, and then click the segment of that road. Selections of buildings can also be aligned with just a simple Alt A like this, or I can use Control Alt A and treat the selection as one building. Also, another interesting feature is the random orientation. While having the building selected, I can press Shift Alt A and all the buildings will receive a random orientation. Probably quite useful for some props or decals, maybe some stains, decals, prop flowers and so on. And of course, you could have seen me do it already, undo feature is present here, just like with the original Move It mod, so Ctrl Z makes everything go back. Alright guys, so that was all. There are probably many more magical things you can do with this amazing mod. Let me know in the comments. Obviously, I leave it up to you to use this information to do whatever you imagine. I only mentioned a very few practical uses. Hope this tutorial, which was in the end not so quick how I imagined, was useful to you and you will build some great things with Move It. Sorry again for not doing the Aurelia episode this weekend. Like I said, not enough time this week to make it, also combined with some tiny lack of imagination. But next weekend on Sunday, episode 17. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like, comment and share. If you're new here, don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter. Thanks again. Take care. Goodbye.